Welcome to Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. Today is August 7th and I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Um, I'm happy to see you all in this very auspicious, beautiful, sunny day from Southern California. Um, just got back from Sedona. I was gone for five days. I went to visit a good friend and I was just uh, looking at locations and to see whether uh, it's feasible for me to do another retreat in Sedona. So later on, I would like to get your input and um, get an idea of the time of the year, uh, possibly if I'm going to put another retreat, um, it would be great to get some input uh, as far as uh, what time of the year if possible to put something together if it's working out for everybody. Um, uno momento, I got some technical difficulty here with my Instagram. Okay, it didn't go live, so now it's picking up. Okay, um, for those of you who are checking me out, uh, they're with me today from Facebook and Instagram. Just keep in mind, um, I can't uh, look at three different screens and answer questions on all the screens. I basically, if you want to communicate with me directly, uh, I encourage you to sign up through my website, which is zaratustra.tv. Go to the Academy section and um, we send you a link and you can come on our system through the Zoom. And that's how I can see you and speak to you and we can communicate with one another. Um, Otherwise, I won't be able to answer you back on Insta or Facebook. But I appreciate you being with me. Um, let's do an easy meditation. We've done this many times before. As I mentioned before meditation, it's a natural phenomena that happens in our lives. And meditation should really be effortless. If you're going to put a lot of effort into it and you're forcing it, then that's not meditation. Forced meditation doesn't really work. Meditation, it's a phenomena that naturally happens. It happens all the time, happens all over the world to everyone. You're, when you're simply present and you're here and you simply divert your attention, from the other worlds, from the objects, and you divert your attention inwards to the very source of yourself, the watcher, the presence, which doesn't really have a name, the source of yourself. We can call it I or I am. But, it's, but I and I am is not even an object. It's not even a person. It simply is. Because if it becomes a person, then it becomes an object. The source of yourself, which is the presence, without any sort of identification, without any kind of categorizing as an individual, as somebody separated from the source, as somebody's trying to do something. This part of you, which simply is here, in the absence of your thinking mind, there is a being, there is a presence which is here, which is aware of the thinking mind, is aware of the feelings, is aware of the body. This part doesn't really have a name. And you may think that's you, that's who you think you are, but that's not that's not true either. That's not the part of you that identifies with an object. That part doesn't have a name. It simply is. And that's really who you are. The absolute being who's here. But this absolute being doesn't have a form. 
it doesn't have a shape, it doesn't have a past, it doesn't have a future, it doesn't have a destiny, it simply is here. And I understand for many people, the mind has a very hard time to grasp this. It's very difficult because the mind wants to conceptualize this. Put it in a category to understand it. But it's impossible. So, right now, I will talk about this afterwards, but for the time being, for the moment, simply, <clears throat> without any effort, divert your attention from any kind of objects, including you as an object. Divert your attention and sink inside, inside the heart of awareness where is simply presence. And stay there.
simply without trying. Hang out here in this moment. Sink inside yourself. Without getting engaged with stories. All the stories are creations of your mind, their memory. Simply hang out in here. Where there is no story and drink from this moment, the presence.
slowly come back. Last week, I was talking about examining the source of yourself, examining the source of I. When you say me, you're referring to yourself, me doing this, me doing that. My feelings are hurt. I have some ideas. I think that after life, this is what's going to happen. I feel that I was living in Egypt before this life. I feel that humanity is going in a wrong direction. I feel um, spiritual, am I, the humanity in their spirituality is evolving, going somewhere. I believe that whatever, you know, whatever you're referring to, it starts with the word I. It comes to me that I believe in this, I believe in that, I am doing this work, I'm doing that work. Something has happened to me, my past. And in my opinion, Life should be this, life should be that, the government should be doing this, uh, they should be doing that. In my opinion, um, they're destroying the forests or they're destroying, they're torturing animals and it's very important to me. It's very important to me that we eat uh, organic food, ecological food. So everything comes to me. You're always referring to me, yourself. So last week, I, if you remember, I asked you, um, I would like you to examine the source of this me, this thought, you. Where, where is that one coming from? Anybody had a chance to do it? Don't be afraid. You can let me know if you did it or not. I'm not going to grade you. So you didn't do. Nobody did it, huh? All right. Let's see. Hi, Pragya. Hi. Hi. I did it. Oh, you did it. Good. <laughs> you, you, didn't use your, you didn't shake your hand, so I couldn't tell. No, so, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> you did or you didn't? You, uh, you, you were examining the source. Yes, I... I was often because um, I use this time to do something what I usually don't like to do at all, my taxes. And uh, it's like every time when they came up, I don't like to do it. Uh, I was just uh, doing my examination and I have never had so much fun with my taxes so far. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> okay. You had never had so much fun with what? With doing, with doing my tax collection. Oh, sorry. With doing my tax collection because it's like usually I don't like it. And uh, right. every time when my thought come up about like uh, doing the tax collection and I don't like it, was like, okay, who's saying that? Yeah. And how much fun can I have with that? And uh, actually it's working quite good. So no complaints. Beautiful. So you already can see like it gets transformed when you're questioning it, when you're really looking at it, because the mind comes and says, oh, I'm so bored. I hate doing this as a thought. And then when you look at it and examine it and you, it disappears. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. And yesterday I had the same thing where I felt like, 
on a certain topic, I felt like, oh, I could jump out of the window right now. Right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, question. And then I said, who is, who is this? Maybe I stay and the one who wants to go out of the window could show out of the window. So it changed. Yeah. It so changed. It's easy. Beautiful. I'm very happy to hear that. Congratulations. <laughs> Keep doing the work. So, but let's say, uh, and I'm speaking to everybody. Let's say you're very busy, you're being a mom, you're being a dad, you have your work and you're really engaged with, with whatever you're doing and you can't do this. But you're going to have half an hour, an hour, couple hours that you have nothing to do. I mean, you will have some time to yourself. I don't care how busy you are as a mom, as a, as a husband, wife, parent, you know, child, whatever is your situation, uh, you're going to have time that you're not, you're alone by yourself. That alone time you have by yourself, you can dedicate it into checking out, examining the source of this I thought this to me challenging it and kind of checking it out that these thoughts and these feelings these emotions that are rising that are important to you whatever is the subject of the story which is you find it important to you you can trace it back to this me this I, and then when it, you trace it back to you, to the I, then you challenge this I, this, this person, this me, that this story is important to it. And you just check that one out to see how real is that one. And as Pragna has been doing it, and then all of a sudden, as you do it for a while, and it depends where you're at on your spiritual path. For some people, it may take a little bit longer, and some people may get, get into it quicker. But it doesn't matter. But if you hang in there and you do it regularly, you make a habit of it, then it leads you into this place. It leads you to this place of freedom that every time you discover, you come to this presence, you come to this place. I don't want to say necessarily bliss, but you come to a very quiet, blissful, quiet place that it's very still. We can call it the observer, the witness. But it's just you come back to the source of yourself. And it's not even you as what you think you are. It's going beyond the idea of you. You go back to the source of yourself. Where this you comes from, it's pre who you think you are. And then you fall back into this place and there is an instant realization every time you do that of everything is very still everything is quiet and it's very clear that all is very well and there is no involvement with the story even if it happens for a couple of seconds you come back to your freedom and then you're capable of doing the most boring thing that you don't like to do. <laughs> you know, because this thought that I hate doing this, I hate being here, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. It's a thought appearing to another imaginary character that that character is also imaginary, it's not real which I call it you, who you think, your idea of who you think you are, 
because you never examined that. No one has ever told you this. Nobody has told you that examine you. All of your trainings up to this point in your life has been to examine the content of your thoughts. You're challenging, you're examining your thoughts or examining your emotions. Okay? But you haven't examined the person who is experiencing him. The source of the, of the I has not been questioned. What I, what me, the contents of thinking is very important. So I believe in, let's say, a spiritual concept that there is life after death or I had this past life, or I believe that if I concentrate of anything, it will manifest for me. I have the power of manifestation. I believe that I'm, I can create my own reality. I believe that my words are going to get manifested. So if I say these kind of, if I say, oh, I'm, feeling a little bit sick i'm gonna come i feel like i'm coming down with a cold so if i keep saying this then i'm gonna come down with a cold that's for example my belief system so i should not say i'm coming down with a cold i should say i'm fine okay so it's a belief system but now I'm not saying I don't care what the belief system is. Maybe it's a beautiful belief system. Maybe it's not. It's, maybe it's very holy or maybe it's not. So the content of the story is irrelevant. I'm, not, I'm saying do not focus on the content, on the story, on the belief system. Go, go in and see to whom does it matter? Who is this person who gives it importance? And you come back to one thing. You come to I, to me. Your sense of identification. You go back into this idea that you are someone, you're a person, naturally, separated from everything else and rightfully you have the right to feel that way because your experience is separation your experience you're separated from everything else this is what you've been experiencing from age two from where your your ego came in and you began to feel that you're an individual you are a person, one person, separated from everything else. Therefore, you need to look after yourself and the world out there is hostile and it's out there to get you. And it's you against everything else. And it's you later on that needs to come to God realization and become one with God. That's your experience. And I understand that. I understand what you're experiencing. I've been there, done that, gone through it. But I'm sharing with you, this is only a notion. It's a false notion. It's not real. So you need to go beyond that. So if this me, this sense of me being separated from everything, okay? If it's not real, so what is real? 
if Zarathustra, if you're sitting there and you say, you know what, Zarathustra is my teacher and I trust him and I've been with him for a few years. I don't exactly understand everything he says, but I just trust. Okay, so if you trust me and you believe what I'm saying, then take a moment every day, try that. Get this in your routine life and start challenging the I, you, me, yourself. Challenge that part of yourself. You can ask this question when you say, okay, I believe that existence works in this way. Okay. So I had a vision or I had an insight. I came to this realization, but everything starts with I. I came to this realization. I had these visions. I have gone through this transformation. So you're always referring to I, to yourself. So now I want you to examine this me, this I that you're referring to. And I know for some of you it's very scary because you're going to have to challenge your notion of existence. And that's very frightening. The mind will freak out. The mind is going to come and bring you all kinds of excuses. All kinds of stuff is going to come for you. Oh, this is bullshit. This is waste of my time. Oh, this cannot be it. Blah, 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 blah. Because you are challenging the very existence of a false entity. Something that doesn't really exist. It's not real. It's imaginary. What's imaginary? is your notion, your sense of separation, that you're separated. Where you've never been separated. You're completely a part of everything. Everything is you. It's never, you've never been separated from everything that exists in, in universe. That's what you are. So if you are a part of everything, then there is no you. It's only everything. The sense that you, it's only a sense. It's a feeling that you are separated from it, but that feeling is not real. It's a false identification until you're diverted to go examine this I. Who am I? You can ask this question. Who am I? To whom these thoughts and these ideas appear. These are great ideas. You get all these wonderful spiritual ideas, but to whom do they appear? And then your answer is to me. Okay, then who is this me? Examine that one. And in the examination of that one, then you give yourself for the first time in your life to get a chance to go beyond the thoughts, to go beyond the I thought. To go beyond the ego, to go beyond this imaginary person who is needy, who is lonely, who is carry hate, anger, who gets cheated in life, who gets heartbroken.
who is fearful, who thinks that she or he is going to die more than anything else, this me so afraid that it's going to die. So it's going to do anything it can do to hang in their precious life because it's so frightened that its existence is going to end because it's identified with the body. It's identified. But this me does not even exist. It's non-existing. It's a false imagination. So that's why it's so important to focus on the heart. It's so important to bring your attention to the heart of awareness, where is only your being, where it's silence. The journey from the heart, head to the heart, the migration from the head to the heart. Because I'll tell you something, just sharing it with you. The very source, I don't think I've ever shared this with you before, but this is probably the first time I'm sharing this with you because I feel like, you know, also you're ready to hear this. Most of you guys have been with me for a long time. The source of the mind the, is really, the mind comes from the heart. So the I thought or, the origins from the, from the heart. That's where it pops out. So what you think is your mind and everything, it really originates from the heart. And then brain catch it, catch it, jumps to the brain, jumps up. So that's why when you're migrating and you're bringing your attention, you start questioning this and you're just diverting. You're forcing yourself to go here and to fall into the heart of awareness, it becomes silent. It becomes pure silence. And it becomes very still because you have migrated from the mind into the heart. You've gone, you, you go back into the source and it's unexplainable. You can't explain it. There's no words for it. You all been touched by it. You know what I'm talking about. You've been touched by it. You go to these places that it's really vast. It's vast, it's pure, it's present, it's untouchable. And you've had like periods of time that it's eternal and you're there you have no fear you have no sense of separation you have you don't feel lonely and you experience pure presence actually the experiencer is not there it's just is And when you come out of it, that means your mind comes, me comes back, a thought comes back. Okay? You come out of that place, then the me, the I comes and says, wow, this was really amazing. Wow, I was gone. You know, you're looking back I, and then I, you're telling yourself, oh my God, I have to tell Zarathustra about this because I was gone. I was gone. I was like one with everything. Okay? But when, you know, okay, so let's say it started it from this point and it goes to this point. It's in this duration. In this duration, so you started to disappear from here to here and you were gone for let's say half an hour one hour 
So up to here, there is a U. You disappear, and the U appears back here. And then here, when that experience that is finished, you come, you come back, and you say, you look back now. You look back at this, and you say, oh, wow, Zarathustra, I was one with existence. I was gone. But you couldn't say this during that time. During the time that you disappeared from here to here, in this period of time, you couldn't say, oh my God, I am gone. Because there is no you being able to say I'm gone. You're an, you, the, the me is not there. Does this make any sense? Let me know if you want me to explain it, you know, raise your hand or communicate with me because this is too juicy to miss on this part. This is really amazing. This is a good thing we're talking about. Because if you really pay attention, it's a very good time to get it and identify this part and recognize because this if you get this part this is going to free you free you as far as you realize phenomena of who you are and what is going on and then when the i thought comes back when your story you come back with your memory then you start to identify it that the one who comes back is not real. And you start giving it less and less importance. And what happens is you do your practice, you do your work, you start challenging this I, this me thought, this sense of you of being separated. You start challenging it regularly on your free time. When you have time, you focus on it and you start challenging it. Like what pro, pro, uh, pro, pro, I have a hard time every time I want to pronounce your name, I feel like I'm pronouncing pragya. it. Pragya. I'm just, okay, Pragya. What Pragya did is she started using a disadvantaged situation of dealing with taxes, which nobody likes to do it, and she, she turned the poison in medicine. A project that you know you, everybody hates to do, unless you're a tax attorney or you're an accountant, majority of people, they hate dealing with it. So what she did is she turned the poison into medicine. She brought the teachings and the wisdom and she started to challenge this me this I, this me who says, oh, I hate doing this. And she started to challenge that, who is it that hates doing it? And as she started doing it, everything started to turn around. Because she realized that this mind, this me, which is a thought, is coming in the middle and saying, I hate doing that. But then when she went beyond it, there was nothing. When she went beyond I, then who is hating it? She, she came to the realization that this is just a thought. And if you entertain the thought, then you're going to suffer. If you believe it, then every moment of doing your taxes is going to be suffering. You're going to say, oh, I hate doing this. I don't want to do that. Why do I have to do this? I wish I was wealthy and someone else would do it for me. And blah, 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 blah. And you... 28 years. Huh? <laughs> 28 that... years I had exactly this story going. <laughs> exactly. Right. Beautiful. You know, I'm glad. Exactly. Now you have the tools to free yourself from a nagging mind 
and having an opportunity to really come to freedom. Unconditional freedom. And this is gold. This is really gold. I'm going to tell you a story. I was driving here from Sedona and my tire blew. This is the second time. Last time I was driving from Sedona after the retreat and I had a tire blue. I was driving back with Christina and anyway, I didn't I don't have <laughs> somehow I took the spare tire out of the trunk of the car because the trunk is very small and I wanted to have more space into putting stuff in it. So I never put the spare tire back into the trunk of the car. So so the tire blew and I, I put two brand new tires, rear tires. And they're like a few months old. I only put like 2,000 miles on them. Well, this time I go back to Sedona and I'm driving back. And again, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert, and it was 42 degrees centigrade, which is equivalent to 102, three degrees Fahrenheit and the tire blows again brand new tire it blew so I pulled to the side of the freeway this is the middle of nowhere and it's in the Mojave Desert and it's really hot so I pull over and I contact AAA for those of you who live in in outside of the US AAA is a uh, insurance company that they send a tow truck and they come and help you and it's a roadside assistant so I contact them and uh, they say okay we're gonna be there in 45 minutes so 45 minutes go by an hour goes by and I call them back and they made a mistake and the call got cancelled so we have to re we put the order back again and this is like around 3.30 in the afternoon, in the heat of the day. So anyway, I basically nobody, finally at nine o'clock at night, somebody came to rescue me. So I was there sitting there from 3.30 in the afternoon till nine o'clock at night. So what I did was I took my computer out and I started, I had to do a lot of writings. There was a lot of text we need to write for our coming workshops from the website. There's a lot of work to do. So I sat down and I started to, I couldn't go anywhere. So I started to do the work. So I accomplished a lot of the work I needed to do in that four and a half hours that I had to wait. And the mind sometimes comes and says, what are you doing? Why are you here? Blah, 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 blah. And the thought comes and I simply did not pay any attention to whatever the mind was saying. So finally they come and pick me up and you know, I'm talking to one of my good friends, Joel, who I was staying at his house in Sedona. And he says, oh my God, that's horrible. What a disaster. You had to wait for four and a half hours. I said, you know what? I don't feel like it was a disaster. It was very productive. I got to accomplish a lot of the writings I needed to do which I wouldn't do it in Sedona because I wanted to go goof off and play and go to the hikes, go for a drive, go see my friends or go to the creek. And I wasn't doing the work I needed to do. So this gave me an opportunity to take care of the things I had to do. So I didn't, so to me, it wasn't a disaster. 
I was very fine with it. Then, you know, I had to go and spend the night in a hotel because at 9.30 at night, they couldn't fix my car. So I had to deal with it the next day. And so I, I was able to spend some alone time by myself and taking care of everything I needed to take care of without any other distractions. So to me, I, I turn the poison, this is turning the poison to the medicine. This is turning a disadvantaged situation to your advantage. And also, waiting is meditation. When you're waiting, is meditation. If you're forced in a situation that you have to wait, You want to just tell yourself, you want to be grateful that existence has created a situation for you that you can stay in a state of meditation. Wherever you are, you're waiting in the traffic, you're waiting in the line because you have to go register or something, and you use that time. And when your mind comes and says, I hate this, and what are you doing and what the hell is this and life sucks you simply trace this thought back to its origin and you come back and it comes to me to i and you question to whom is this important who is it that is suffering and you trace back and it go back to the source. When you come back to the source, then you see that it's impossible for you to suffer. You cannot suffer. It doesn't matter. I was waiting for four and a half hours in the heat, I can't suffer. It's just the mind suffers. Maybe the body's uncomfortable, but I, the real me, can't suffer because I'm free. When your mind is attached to a certain kind of results, that things has to be in a certain way, and things don't go that way, you're invested in a result, heavily invested in things going in a certain way that you want them to be, otherwise life is hell, then you suffer. Because there is an I, there is an ego with an agenda that wants things to go its way. But if there is nobody there and you, you go beyond this me, then you experience and you begin to discover that you are free. And that's priceless. Because you can't buy it. You can't fake it. You can't duplicate it. You can't manufacture it. Nobody can give it to you. That's something you could be led to, but it's a discovery. You come to this realization and you become free.
all sufferings are happening into a mind, a thought that is identified and believes and is attached to its story. That's where sufferings happen. Get rid of the source and then the suffering. Get rid of the source of the suffering, get rid of this me, and then suffering disappears too. And you experience freedom. In fact, freedom will be your only reality. There is literally no circumstance in life that you cannot turn it from a poisonous situation into medicine. Every poisonous situation in life, you can turn it around to medicine. It doesn't matter what it is, it gives you a chance for transformation of completely transforming your life. It doesn't matter how horrible it is, how devastating it is, that situation is an opportunity to turn it around for freedom. That's how you want to look at things. That's how you want that's an attitude you want to develop. Because for four and a half hours, sitting in 42, 43 degrees, of course, I turned the engine on and I used the air conditioning. But I did not suffer. I didn't feel like something was wrong. I didn't feel like this was a disaster. I simply used that time to do the things I needed to do. Even the things I want to do is being silent and meditating. It's great. In the middle of the desert stock, there's nowhere I can do. It's a perfect time to be still, perfect time to dive in, to drink from the juice, being blissed out without any distractions. Because a normally normal time, I don't really get that opportunity. I mean, it's there, but there's also a million different things to do that it's more difficult to just stay still and dive into doing nothing for four hours when you have thousands of things to do and people are messaging you or you have obligations, you got your projects, you got your employees to work with, you got your clients to work with and things to do. But then all of a sudden existence puts you in a situation like that And it's like, okay, you can complain about it and say how much life sucks, or you can just surrender and dive into it and turn a disadvantage situation of doing taxes into an advantage to a blissful experience and get everything done. And you get this challenge every day. Every day you get challenged. You, every day you get this, ex, this opportunity to, to dive into it again, over and over again.
examine it for yourself consciously and pay attention and see how this thing works when there is no mind see how things work excuse me i need to get the instagram going again when you're simply here you're hanging out in here and there is no thought and examine this for yourself don't take my word for it just examine it whether you have your eyes closed meditating or you're simply sitting you're here and you have no thoughts and there is no story you need to consciously regularly try to not identify with your story whatever is your story get rid of it it's just a story it's meaningless absolutely meaningless it brought you to this point you got all these experiences that you need to get and you can refer to it when you want to buy a car and you can refer to your experience because last time you got kind of screwed by the car salesman and you can refer to your memories and your experience so you don't get screwed again but you don't need to carry this story with you and go over it over and over again it's poison and identify see how addicted you are to this story every time you sit down with somebody you just met them and you start telling them your story bring yourself and look at yourself from the outside and rem rem remember again that this is just a story and you can even say it if you have to say it but just be fully aware of the story that is only thoughts coming from your memory that's all it is and if you start believing in it then you're signing up for suffering if you're gonna buy into it then you are signing up for another round of suffering and if that's what you want then that's what you want but don't bring it to me because i don't care don't bring the same story i heard your story those of you who've been with me don't keep bringing it to me keep it to yourself because I know it's not real I don't even believe my own story
Yeah, make a practice on your free time, when you have time, 10 minutes, half an hour, one hour, whatever. And go back to the source, go back to the I thought, whatever is your story, it comes to you, you hear something, it's important, it comes to you. And go into this place, to whom does it matter? And then your mind will come and say, to me. And the moment it comes to me, to then examine the me. Say, who is this me? Who, who, is, who am I? Who is this me? that this story is very important to it. And then when you do this on a regular basis, on your free time, what happens is since you got established into doing it on your free time, that in the moments that you're very busy, in the moments that you're in the middle of a chaos, you're into a real you know, situation that something happened, your, your, your child just fell off the ladder and cut his arm and he needs stitches. Blood is flowing, your, your child is screaming, and you go pick up your child and you're rushing, you're running to the car to get in the car and drive to the hospital. In the midst of doing that, the awareness kicks in because you've been practicing it. Now in the midst of the chaos, all of a sudden you begin to see yourself outside of the story. You find the awareness, who you are is here, watching at you, going through these motions of being a mommy, that your, your son has fallen down the ladder and cut his leg and this is an emergency. And you're rushing your son to the hospital. But then you can see like there's an awareness here, watching the whole thing. And then all of a sudden what happens is silence and stillness will creep in to the drama. And then you will see the quality of reaction changes. Because now you start reacting to everything from a still place. You're still, you're collected and you're calm and you're reacting to a situation that normally you would be hysterical and you would acting in panic. And you know, you're rushing and you may bang your head against something or you may hit your toe against the bed, the bed or something and break something or drive like crazy and get in a car accident or forget your wallet or whatever it is. But now you're operating to an emergency from a very calm and collected place. It's a complete different quality that you bring to your life. And you know, that's one example I'm using. Or let's say you go, you know, shoddy, you go to a job interview and now you've done the work and you go to the job interview from a complete place of stillness, calm, collected, and you bring this presence to job interview. Your heart is beating normal, you're not nervous, and you easily can handle the interviewer in a very simple way, you answer everything because you're operating from this other level of consciousness that you're not normally, you don't normally operate from.
Did you see um, there's a message from Rosalie or about her friend Ingrid has cancer, inhaled, and wants uh -huh. to send her energy. She's having trouble breathing. Okay. Do we have time to do that? Rosalie, what, what is it you want us to do? If I can get help from everybody body to be with me to send healing and energy for inhale, my friend, she has cancer and now she has get water around her lung and she has also get some old trouble with her lung. Okay. okay. And uh, I talked with her and she said, can't you talk with the Monacademy? Okay. And I said, I can. Sure, we'll do a prayer for her. What's her name again? Inhild. Inhild. Okay. Yeah, Inhild. Okay, good. Okay, we'll take a few moments. Send our sister Inhild in Norway some love, some juju, and ask for healing energy to come, whether. It's in her destiny for the body to get healed or not, but um, we merely send her love. So peace comes in and she feels the love and the support that is available to her. And since she's not separated and she's a part of us, even though we don't know her, but she's a part of us. So we send her some love. So let's take a deep breath and we'll bring her to our heart center. Simply bring her energy, her being in your heart center. And we send her some love. And we'll send, since this love energy is not just limited to one person, we send this love to every being across the universe who is lonely, who is feeling separated, who is in pain and suffering. And we send this love to all of them.
slowly, slowly come back. Okay, well, thank you all for showing up. Nice to see you all. Our next academy is going to be next Wednesday, uh, same time, 10 to 11.15 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time and 19 to 8, 2015 um, European time. So from 7 to 8.15. <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask you, I forgot to ask you this. Let me ask you this question. So I'm considering to possibly putting um, a retreat in Sedona. And uh, I'm looking at a few different dates. Um, I can do it sometimes in January. I can do it maybe possibly the third week of or of February, which is still winter in Sedona. Or my other option is maybe I do it in Easter, Easter time in Europe, which would be the Easter in Europe is going to be from the 4th of I mean, Easter is on 12th of April. So if I do it in Easter, I probably will do it from April 4th to April 11th. So it will be like last year, nine days. So my question is, what do you think about having the retreat in Sedona in Easter, during Easter time? Any any suggestion? Can you give us a little time to check the dates? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I yeah, mean, we'll... right now, for me, I would love to come in January, but if you say it's still winter and it's cold and it's better in April, then, uh, yeah, I, I have to look that I make time in April. Yeah, January, February is Sedona's winter. I mean, it's not like Scandinavian winter, but it's still winter. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, April, the weather is really good. But if I do it in April, I probably have I have to do it on on Easter holiday. So um, so I'm just kind of go ahead. Can we write you in uh, Facebook message? Say that again. Can we write you over Facebook message when our yeah. dates fit? Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, you know, if you want to send me a private message, we're Facebook friends, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, send me a private message so I, I check my private messages. So. Okay. I think April is good. Yeah, the April uh, in Sweden and Germany, it's on the 12th, 12th, 13th of April. But I know in uh, Norway, Sweden, they start taking a week off before the actual date. So people start taking off from the fourth, third, fourth. But anyway, this is a possibility. I, you know, I, I'm debating with it right now. Um, there's a lot of elements I need to consider. So, but I wanted to just kind of. See if I can get some feedback. Can you say the date in April again? Uh, the the actual third day is 12th of April. Tw tw April 12th is the Easter day. 12th, okay. So I'm and thinking... From, I'm from thinking the 12th? 
So nine days. Again. From the 12th, nine days. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking about checking on the 4th, check out on the 11th. And then um, 11th is going to be on, the last day is going to be on, um, I believe it's going to be on a Sunday. And then it gives everybody a chance to go back home and be at work on the 14th. So let me see, I'm looking at my dates right now. So I'm going to look at some other dates and I'll share it with you. Right. Yeah. Sometimes around then from 4th, from 5th, probably 4th of April to 11th or 12th. Um, all right. Well, it's nice seeing everybody. Thank you for joining me. And uh, don't forget, do your practice. <laughs> do, do the work and and use every disadvantage situation to your advantage turn the poison into medicine and be grateful when something doesn't go your way and it's a disadvantage situation look at it as an opportunity that you can turn this around and make it make it a turn the poison into the medicine no matter what the situation is you can always turn it around and learn a valuable lesson from it or get to practice meditation in that situation whatever it is it doesn't matter what that is because existence has thrown this situation at you and is challenging your ego so there is a resistance in you, something you need to learn that this thing has happened. So it just doesn't happen randomly. It's for your spiritual growth. You look at it that way. It doesn't matter if it's randomly or accident. It's happening to you and you're facing it. So what do you want to do with it? Sit down and cry and suffer? Or turn it around and make it make it into an advantage to yourself by being by using that moment by using whatever has happened to going deep inside and challenging the I thought to go into silence to go into stillness you have that option available to you so let's use it i send a lot of love to all of you nice seeing you thank you for joining me god bless you and i'll see you next wednesday uh those of you who are hearing me on facebook or um instagram you're welcome to write to me. I mean, my website is zaratustra.tv. Uh, you can join us on our academy page on Facebook, Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. My YouTube channel is zaratustra-5d, and Instagram is zaratustra-5d. So reach out and connect with us. Much love. Bye-bye.